my review and how-to of the Case DSLR Remote. So a few weeks ago, I teased this little black box on Instagram and said, what in the world could this be? A couple smart people Googled it, figured it out. It is, in fact, a DSLR remote. Now, I'll be honest, these things are becoming less and less necessary as more and more DSLRs come with Wi-Fi built in, but there are some reasons why you'd still want this. And of course, those of us who do not have cameras with DSLR built in, like maybe a T5i or the Canon 70D Mark II. And you want to be able to both control your camera from a distance, starting and or taking pictures, uh, downloading photos, changing the settings, then this offers a really nice option. It is in fact one of the most affordable options out there. There are others but this one is the cheapest and so far seems to be one of the most full featured as well uh, with no do it yourself required like my other favorite option DSLR controller. So you get this, you get a little quick start guide that has the SSID and the password on the back. You get a little USB charging cable and you get one of these nifty Flash Hot Shoe. This campaign started on Indiegogo. It is being developed and even in the short time that I've had this, they've made updates to both the firmware and the software on iOS and Android side um, to adding more features. So it's, it's really neat to see such active development uh, and I've been assured by the developers, developers that new features are coming, including the ability to control start and stop video and focus, which would be really sweet. So how does it work? It's pretty simple. You charge it up, it's got a little internal battery, and you do that via the USB micro USB cord. You need to supply your own USB cord that connects to your camera. It should have come with your camera. And you screw on the little uh, hot shoe. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it works so nicely. You set it up there on top of the camera. You plug in one end to the device. You plug the other end into your camera. Operation is very simple. There's a button on top that you press to turn it on. It's got two lights on top, really simple operation. Blue light when it's steady means it's broadcasting a signal. When it's flickering means it's starting up or having an issue. The other light is green, yellow, or red depending on the battery charge. And it gives you about five hours of battery life. Once it's on and the blue light is steady, that means it's sending out that signal so you want to Open up your tablet, phone, go into your Wi-Fi settings, and I've already done this once, so I'm going to go into Wi-Fi, turn my Wi-Fi on, and it's going to come up with the case, and I'm going to collect, connect to it. If this is the first time you're doing this, you'd be prompted for the password, and there is a, the little password on the card that comes in the box. So once it's connected there, you can go and launch the case app. Case Remote app. This is a free download for iOS or Android. I've played with it on both. Uh, it does seem to be a bit more stable on the iOS device. Android is a little bit more flaky, uh, but in both cases, as I said, there's been multiple updates in the time I've had this and improvements both in stability and the feature sets that are coming as well. Once it's on, it should tell you what camera is running, and we can see that here. Uh, you know, one thing that I think always confuses folks when we talk about Wi-Fi connections to cameras uh, is the fact whether or not you need your own Wi-Fi connection, your own cell phone signal. No, this is a point-to-point -point system. Uh, this is its own hotspot, so you could do this anywhere in the world. You don't need a signal. You don't need somebody else's Wi-Fi. All you need is this thing to be on, and you can connect to it whether or not you're in range of cell service or anything of that sort. So there's a top right corner is a little eyeball. It will let you turn live view on. So there is live view and you can see that it's quite out of focus. I'm just gonna manually focus it uh, for speed purposes right now. Well, there it's trying to focus on its own. So you can see the little guy standing there and that is a live feed. It has a lag and certainly we're very close right now. I've noticed that the further away you get, the longer the lag becomes. Uh, and speaking of distances, I have found easily 50 to 60 feet. Beyond that, uh, there is claims of up to 100, 150 feet. Um, maybe in certain circumstances that would work well for you, but I think reliably you're talking about 50 to 60 feet. A little bit further, maybe. All right, so it's on and showing me live view. And 
I can press this little button right here on the side to take a picture. I also do have the ability to change the focus by tapping on the little uh, arrows up and down as well. And of course I can put a little grid lines um, on the screen as well. Like that. I'm actually going to put it in manual to focus for a minute so it stops trying to focus on this guy. And let's just, because I have, there, it's focused now. Uh, so what are some of the other things that you can do besides take a picture, see your live view, and of course focus? Well, you can bring up your little uh, icons here to adjust your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. So in right now, I'm shooting with an f1.4 lens, so I can switch to f1.4, and we should see this image get brighter. Oh, we're not going to see it get brighter until I turn auto ISO off. So let's go to ISO 400, and now we should see it get brighter. So it's letting in more light. So I say, oh, I can change my shutter speed now. Let's go to a faster shutter speed to get a more appropriate exposure for this image. And now it looks a little bit better. So, um, and we can see that we have a very shallow depth of field behind Commander Strong, that is his name. Uh, it is out of focus, so we can go to f4.5 and we shall see more of the image get in focus if we adjust our ISO at the same time so that we have more light and be able to see more of that in focus. Not a huge difference, because we are working at very close distances, but again, you can see we can make those changes, and down across the bottom of the screen, you can see that all of those changes are registered there as well, as long as the battery life is there. Let's go over here to our little hamburger options and look at settings. We could have turned off, or I could have turned off the auto funk autofocus right here as well. So I didn't need access to the camera. This would have been great if I set up the camera in a remote location, moved away from it, and realized that its autofocus was working continually, and I didn't need that. So you could turn it off there as well by sliding that switch over. Shooting mode, I'm currently in manual, but I have all of these other modes that are available to me through the camera are available right here. Even though I don't have access to the dial on the camera to make these changes, I can make them right here, the shooting modes. We also have, of course, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO that we saw adjusted, and exposure compensation, which isn't going to do anything for us when we're shooting in manual mode, but that's available to us in the other modes. Your auto exposure balancing, or bracketing, sorry, your exposure bracketing is there as well, so if you wanted to set up for an HDR shot, this app will not combine the shots itself, but it will, of course, allow you to take multiple. You could set your white balance, your drive mode, your metering mode, and also adjust your image quality. One of the things and one of the reasons why you might use this, even though you have built-in Wi-Fi to many cameras, including like the 70D, is because you are often very limited in what you are able to access from the camera and download. Almost always it is kind of these smaller resolution JPEG files, or sometimes larger resolution JPEGs, but very rarely is it ever raw files. And this will, of course, allow you to transfer any picture you're taking, whether it's a small JPEG, a large JPEG, or raw. File sizes are going to determine how long it takes you to download, meaning the larger they are, the smaller or longer it's going to take to download. But you have that option available to you right there in that image quality setting. Let's go back into uh, our other options that we can get into across the bottom here. We're in camera right now, but we're going to go to features at the bottom. And notice that there are a few features here and there are more coming. If you click the add new button, it just lets you know that more are coming. So focus stacking. Focus stacking is a really neat technique for macro photography where you've got the camera set on a tripod, you're working with a really high magnification lens. Those of you who have done that, you know that your depth of field is incredibly small. So through focus stacking, what you can do is actually take a series of pictures at various focus points with just a little bit of difference in between. And then you can bring those images into Photoshop, stack them all, and merge all of the sharp areas of the focus of the image into focus giving you a much greater depth of field. So that will do it right there. You can say how many shots you want to take all the way up to number nine, and the step, the amount of focus difference from one shot to the next. You can make that adjustment right there as well. I've actually used that technique for fun in uh, kind of creating video openings to some of my reviews where I shoot and allow it to get focus on a camera that I'm reviewing and then move beyond just for kind of that little bit of a cinematic effect. And again, it's sitting on a tripod still works very nicely. HDR, 
we can see that we have a huge, much larger number of shots that we can take in bracketing within this program than you would normally be able to in most cameras. And you can set their property and what the start shutter speed should be and the step differences in exposure from image to image. And finally, we have a time lapse. Now there are other programs that'll do this. There's cheap intervalometers, there's Trigger Trap, which is a fantastic app as well. Uh, but that does those things do not give you your of course live view and easy control of your camera. But you do have time lapse in here. You can say how far in advance do you want this to start? Maybe you know sunset's going to be happening in about an hour, and so you want it to start in 45 minutes. And so you could come in here and just scroll all the way up to 45 minutes and say in 45 minutes, start taking pictures. But in our case, let's say we want it to start in two seconds. We want the interval to be one second, and we want it to end after 10 seconds. And then we hit this button, and we are in time-lapse mode. It just took a picture. It should take another one. And it's gonna take a couple more until it hits that end period of 10 seconds. I will say that right now there's very little feedback on what it's doing as it's taking this picture. So you just have to remember in your head, okay, I set it for 10 seconds. It's going to be running for that amount of time and then it will be done like it is right now. Um, so now we've got some shots. We've taken some pictures either through time lapse or just that very first one I took. We can go over to our Explorer and see the pictures that we've taken that either have already downloaded to the camera as some you can see that I've done earlier or by um, bringing up the camera. And then we have access to every picture that has ever been taken on this card currently, which is pretty sweet. You could see some ones earlier where I was testing the diff distances and firing off shots. And then of course, the ones that I just took just a few minutes ago of our Commander Strong right there. And so I can select one of those and say download. And of course I can select multiple and download or just one. Once that image is downloaded, it's on the device that you're working with and you have access to it like you have any other image. You can do whatever you would like. Uh, and we should now see that over in devices and we can click on it. And that is a great example of some of the bugginess. So I've seen this happen a couple of times in trying to open up the image. It does crash, uh, but you know, comes right back up. But uh, that does not seem to want to work there. So they do still have some bugs to work out. But like I said, I've been really impressed with the changes and features going forward. Uh, and I think there will be uh, some nice, I think it's going to get better. I'm hopeful about that. The last section in here that I do want to take a moment and show you is settings. You have a couple of settings. One is auto download. So every time it takes a picture, you could have it automatically send that over to your device. You also have the option of adding GPS location. Now this isn't going to work with all devices. Your device has to have a GPS in it and it needs to be on. But if it is, it will write that data into the file as the picture's coming over. It's a nice, neat technique to add GPS data. So geotagging your information as it goes. You have adjustments to the focus step size that we mentioned earlier here. Of course, you can change the grid color from black, gray, red, or white. And you can adjust what is available to you on that quick menu that we saw uh, over on the right. And through here, you can also update the firmware on the device as well. And as I said, there have been uh, several updates. Well, actually only one update to the firmware while I've been using it, but several updates to the app that have increased its functionality. It is absolutely one of the most affordable ones. I'm gonna put a link right to the Amazon site they gave me for buying this right down below. Um, but if you want access to your camera remotely, both be able to control it and to access the images and have it fairly portable. As you can see, it is quite small, really doesn't add any weight at all. It weighs less than it even looks. You supply the cable, they supply the cable for powering it up and it will allow you to access your camera, make changes, and of course, download those images. If you've got any questions about this, leave a comment right down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And as I said, links to check out their site are right down below as well. If you appreciated this review and you haven't already subscribed, take a moment to do that. If you already are a subscriber, or if you just subscribed, take a moment, hit that thumbs up button if this was helpful to you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.